I'm going to be reading from my new collection that came out, I think, just three weeks ago called Inheritance. This, um, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, the first poem is called The Dead. I read his obituary. Not only will he never breathe, eat, or sleep, he will never fuck. I remember the hot tub, his wandering hands, and I feel honored to have shared that with him. I've shared sex with so many who are now dead. Been there to give a moment of pleasure to a shortened life, knowing them in ways their mourning mothers couldn't have known, knowing their bodies, not like the back of my hand, or hometown, but as a quick destination I visit for adventure, excitement, ejaculation. I knew their bodies when they had pulses, when their heartbeats quickened and their chests heaved with the intensity of orgasm. To desire them now feels odd is the very vessel I lusted for decomposes. And when one of our sexual scenes flashes through my mind during masturbation, I appease my guilt, remind myself that this is a way I knew them, an ex-lover's way of honoring the dead and honoring the places I touch that cannot be touched again. This next uh, poem is called Project, which is actually a homonym, so it could be Project or Project. And it came about because I discovered this web site called ussearch.com, and on it, it lists every address you've ever lived at. And um, so I looked myself up, and it listed all the addresses, and then it listed my parents, where they lived, and their birth dates. So when filling out the long form it took to get myself off of the list, I thought, well, why am I while I'm here, I'll look up an X. So, um, so that's a lot. <laughs> and, uh, which is internet stalking on a whole new level. And this is what, you know, that experience is what this poem is about. Project. I'm going to build you piece by piece. I'll assemble your life, make a map, track your employers, make a timeline. I'll construct a picture of what you've been doing since we last spoke. Graph the ups and downs of your relationships. But most of all, I'll be erecting a composite of the life I haven't been kept abreast of, wondering if I was ever missed. This is a very short poem. I think maybe the shortest poem in the book. And Though uh, it's called two atlases, and atlas is the god carrying, you know, the world. Um, though it has a lot of poetic imagery, it required no imagination whatsoever on my part. I went to a party called Gods and Monsters, and I went as Atlas, and then I met another Atlas, and we made out in the corner. So <laughs> that's um, that's how I got this poem. All right, it's called Two Atlases. We both set down our worlds. Our ha our hands find homes. Our lips find each other. Our tongues wrestle, our togas fall to the floor, shrugging off the responsibilities of the worlds we carry, we find each other. And this last poem I'm going to read for you, uh, I thought of just last week during uh, Pride, that uh, on stage, at the main stage, they had someone signing. Uh, for the hearing impaired, and he was even signing during songs. So uh, during dance music, he was there signing along to uh, Bad Romance by Lady Gaga, which is so fascinating to watch. Uh, and this poem was published in a book called Eyes of Desire, which is uh, about uh, queer uh, deaf people. So this is called Legal Pads. I met him online. 
pressed in an email for his number. His confession followed. Even if I had his number to dial, he wouldn't hear me on the other end. We soon found ways of contact and would sit on my couch having conversations on legal pads. It was on that lined paper, I was told, of his, of his Midwest childhood, Gallaudet University, rude waiters, and the maddening bass driven music at gay clubs. After three dates and horror filled notebooks, the hands with which he spoke to others explored my body, speaking with touch, not the pen, tracing details I had long forgotten, the circular scar on my shin, the folds of my ear, and my ticklish belly. Throughout it all, I heard his sounds, the deep primal utterings of excitement or fascination, We'd see foreign films together at the rundown theater, the poor sound system inconsequential as we read each yellowed word at the screen's edge. I became accustomed to a shaking bed waking me up, a flickering light signifying company, and no radio in the car. He and I, out of necessity, scribed our desires. Each scrawled sentence purposeful and precise. When he was not with me, I'd reread our legal pads, each line sealing my memory of that moment. I reread the lines of his love for me, something to reference later. That his feeling was documented, felt more authentic, unshakable, almost unrefuted, like a legal document itself. Thank you.